Welcome to Roosevelt Live, uh, season three. Is that right? I don't know what season I'm in. Okay, we're in season three, people. Just a little backwards humor there. Um, today, you know, being it's the last week of Black History Month here in February, we're going to do our last segment on uh, Heroes to History. I explained before that my concept of Heroes to History is of people that uh, was before their time, people that did things that in their era was extraordinary. And it changed the face of uh, the way we see things today in America, uh, in my opinion. Those people because become heroes to me, therefore they're part of history, therefore it becomes heroes to history. And that's my definition of that uh, title. And today we're looking at an entire area, uh, a, a, a place, uh, Oklahoma, Tuscaloosa, Oklahoma. I never, never said that word right, but people that know know what I'm talking about. Um, that, that area, a lot of uh, people came, a lot of African Americans came from the South. Uh, you know, some came by train, some came by wagon, some came on foot. Uh, they were desperate. They were desperate to get there. It was an area that uh, wasn't as uh, have the segregation issues that they had had in the deep south, and they came there to want to get a fresh start. Some people came because they had ancestors that um, that was already there. They wanted to come join their family members. I don't know how they for sure knew that they were there, but well, I guess you could always get mail. This was in 1907, so it's not like we're in prehistoric times or anything. Uh, they got there. There's one area of uh, uh, that town that changed the name eventually to Greenwood. But uh, before then, they they wasn't able to actually go out aside that area and uh, shop at stores or anything. So they began to really build a kind of like a mini city, where the dollars instead of them getting money from jobs and going outside the areas and spending the money, it became money that was kind of passed around in a circle. And and through that process. Uh, there were people uh, affluent uh, African Americans living there even in, in, in the early 19, 1907, 1910 and like that all the way up to 1921 before the riots took place uh, there were uh, multi-millionaires lived in that area and they shopped in their own area they had doctors, they had, they had uh, hospitals, they had stores they had, uh, they had uh, law firms they had a lot of things in that area and at one time that area housed over 10,000 African Americans and it, it was really uh, a, a great place at that time for them to be until the riots came uh, due to some of the racism that was going on that time uh, that they the city uh, that they know as Greenville uh, was burned to the ground it was burned to the ground uh, due to uh, maybe some jealousies of people that didn't understand how these people at this time was able to function and and build their own not the city was already there but to, to bring it into their own and, and being it was 10,000 African Americans living at the time the numbers suggest that that they were able to uh, you know keep their noses clean there was no problems I mean everybody had problems but I mean it's not like it, you know people trying to make it seem like a lot of times that if you're African American somehow you're you're thugging you're criminals you got a thousand babies etc etc but uh, in that time in that era they did well for themselves and um, and they all the way up until 19, they did, re, did get rebuilt. And until 1960, when uh, when uh, desegregation came about, and they was able to and allowed to shop in areas outside of Greenville, is is when they was able to branch out and do other things. And and it wasn't so concentrated. But when it was concentrated, because of the ability to go outside and shop uh, was a negative, um, it, it done well. And uh, and today it, it was it was it was called the Black Wall Street. And uh, I think that for its time, the people was able to do the things they were able to do back then and able to live in those adverse situations and was able to come together as a community. And people that came from, all, like I said, from all parts of the deep south, that came to Tulsa, Oklahoma to, uh, to, to start a new life. And just the thought of knowing people took horse wagons and, and I could train is one thing. The horse and wagon is another thing. But on foot, I don't know how far they came. But man, if you walk in some place, and it's more than a, you know, 50 miles. Then you're desperate to get to where you're at. And, and imagine I don't I don't imagine what they may have gone through trying to get to that destination. But I consider that area of the country and and how they set that up and the people that came in there and the people that became seven eight millionaires. I consider those people as a collective group or will be our heroes for the last segment of the Black History for this month because it took a lot. To get in that, to get yourself to that point, it took a lot of people coming together, like I said, collectively, in order to uh, form that little town of ten thousand, 
and uh, to be a thriving business at that, and a thriving town at that, and to the point that, like I said again, it produced several millionaires, and uh, they said the money moving around was was so great because it was, wasn't going anywhere. Whatever money was made in town stayed in town, and, and it pretty much was like that until until the sixties. Like I said again, when desegregation came about, so. For the, for the end of the Black History Month, and I'm not, not saying that it won't be other segments on people that I consider heroes, because I might consider keeping heroes to history, and it won't necessarily have anything to do with Black History Month, because heroes to history is not necessarily a color, because I just say heroes to history. But this this month in particular, I use it as African American because it's it's in honor of uh, uh, this month, uh, African I mean, Black History Month. Therefore, I use that. But in the future, there might be more his, his heroes to history. I mean, they have anything to do with African Americans. I don't want to be just stuck on that. So, if if we do decide decide to um, continue this segment uh, through the following seasons, then I will have it set aside. So, every now and then, through all the bad and negative things that I talk about, uh, every now and then, it's good to hear something positive. And I think we should have a segment that's positive because you can get overwhelmed with all these problems and all these things that are going on in the world. So, every now and then. It's gonna be good to bring something to the screen, something to the to the to the fans or the people that are watching that's positive. Because if you continue to hear negatives, you know your glass will become from half full to half empty, and we don't want that to happen. So, again, uh, my my last segment for the show for this month for February for Black History is the town o Tulsa, Oklahoma, that that didn't change the name of that area to uh, Green Greenwood, and those people there during that time from 1907. All the way up, and before 1907, all the way up to 1960 when they were able to branch out. Those people along the way, I consider collectively, was my heroes. Therefore, they're part of my history for this month. So we're going to, in the next segment, going to move on to some things that are going on in the here and now. So we're going we're gonna to end that for this month. I'm Roosevelt, and I'm the host of Roosevelt Live, and we'll be back with uh, segment two.